buy low, sell high. Let's lock that in before we go any further. Buy low, sell high. Okay, are we ready? Okay, so we're gonna talk about selling your gold and it's not because I think that you should sell your gold, but because I've really only talked about this in pretty vague terms. Like these coins are liquid, these coins are not, but regardless of timing of when you expect to sell, I really think that everyone should know what to expect beforehand. And to keep this realistic and to keep this useful to everyone, I'm not gonna get into selling on YouTube or Instagram or avenues that I might hypothetically have because of this channel. I mean, I could possibly say that I was selling my gold here on the channel and I might get a serious buyer, but that option just, it doesn't travel. We're gonna to stick to options that we all have. So the primary methods that we're going to be looking at here, pretty simply, you're gonna be selling to a dealer or you're going to be selling to a private buyer. We're gonna start with the dealer. Now selling to a dealer, it's probably the safest, probably the easiest, that's why I'm starting there. But in a lot of cases, it's probably also the least profitable. Just know that going in. And dealer, well, that can mean a few things. I can sell to my local coin shop, I can sell at a coin show to a vendor, or I could sell to an online dealer like Jambolion or Appmex. Now, the reason selling to a dealer is easy is that they're almost always buying. I've never heard a coin shop owner say that they aren't. And if you ran into a case where they weren't, well, an online dealer will be. If we start with local dealers, it just makes sense to me to reach out and ask if they're buying and what they're paying. So find the dealers in the phone book. Is that still a thing? Look them up on your phone. Give them a call, ask them. Now I asked a few recently here that I know to get an updated sense of what dealers are paying right now. And it's about the same as it was when I asked a year ago. My local dealers will give two to 3% over a spot for American Gold Eagles or Buffaloes. They'll give 1% over for Canadian Maple Leafs, and then they'll give spot for just about any other popular bullion, like say a Britannia, a Krugerrand, or a Kangaroo. Now I have yet to meet a local dealer who will pay more for a specific series coin, who'll pay more for say a proof coin. That isn't to say they don't exist, but maybe don't get your hopes up too high. Now that's a pretty tight range. They were pretty consistent at all four shops and that shouldn't be a surprise because technically they're competitors. They're gonna have similar offerings. Now I did check outside the area as well. I checked with four more out of the area and I got similar responses from two of them. The other two said they needed to see what I had. They mentioned spot when I told them I was just looking for something off the cuff, just a price estimate. But that idea that you'll get a little bit more for American U.S. Mint products, that's pretty common. You're going to find that most places. Now, 20 francs roosters go to the other side of the spectrum. I heard 94 to 95% of spot. And a few of them did say they're not buying roosters right now. That one surprised me a little bit. Now, bars, they're getting 95 to 100% of spot, depending on inspection, as one of them put it. And I didn't really press beyond those few options because that's pretty much the range that most of us would have. So like I said, this is the easiest option to sell. There's no shipping, there's no concern for payment disputes or chargebacks, and in most cases, it will be a cash deal. Now most dealers will require some kind of basic information from you, maybe they'll ask for your ID, maybe they'll ask for phone and name, and some will only pay by check. But all that can be figured out with a quick phone call to the shop. And one thing that I should mention quickly, one thing I noticed calling around is that some shops are just more open than others when it comes to less well-known coins. These Chinese myths and legends coins that I've been showing, they're probably a bad example because I would just hate to sell them for spot, but I did ask a few of the dealers about them in particular, and only one of them knew the coins that I was talking about. Rest said they would have to take a look. And that's typically not a good sign if you're hoping to get anything more than spot. If you're just unsure how this process works or if the idea makes you anxious, just know that it's pretty straightforward stuff. People buy and sell every day at these shops and it really is as easy as calling up the shop and asking if they're buying and then what they pay. Now, if they are, just grab what you wanna sell, keep it in a capsule or a flip and you head on in. Now, 
some things to know. If you're going to be selling more than say four ounces, you might need to give them a heads up. And you should also be aware that the larger the sale, the more paperwork you're going to need. You'll get an IRS form 8300 for any payout or close series of payouts above $10,000. And you'd see that with anything that you were selling above that mark. Now with bullion though, you will get a 1099B if you're selling 25 or more Krugs, Maples or one ounce Mexican coins. They call them Anzas, but that just means a one ounce coin. Same goes for kilo bars of gold. Same goes for thousand ounce silver bars or more than a thousand dollars face value of constitutional silver. It, it is what it is. It's just something you'd rather avoid if you could. Something to be aware of. And then as for final price, I wouldn't expect to negotiate my way to a higher price personally, but feel free to give that a shot. My guess though is that you'll already know more or less what you're going to walk away with before you even get to the counter. Now if it's difficult for you to get to a physical shop, there are online dealers who try to make the process very easy as well. If you look at jmbullion.com, you'll see the buyback numbers right on the site. There's a sell to us line clearly stated on each product detail page and they're in line with those numbers that I gave earlier from local dealers. Now, if you're selling to them, you go through a few steps on their website and then you ship the items off to them. Once they've received the gold, they've inspected it to make sure it is what you said it is, they wire you the proceeds. Now, Appmex is pretty similar. I think they actually start with a phone call, but they have a nice deal with UPS to help package everything up. Both are pretty easy. And I wouldn't say that any of this is fun, but again, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to realize that it will be several days before you have your cash. And if you're wondering, once you've settled on a price, by the way, that's the price that you get. So spot price falls while the gold is in transit, you still get the higher agreed upon price. That assumes, of course, that you were accurate with what you told them you were selling. Now, there are a lot of other options that are available to at least some of you, Facebook groups, Craigslist, Reddit, and then, of course, eBay. All of them have communities that are buying and selling all the time, but there are some drawbacks of a lot of those. And personally, I think there's just a big benefit to having a pro involved in the transaction. So until that's you, until you're the one who's the pro, sticking with dealers makes a lot of sense. And if that is not going to work or you just don't want to go that route, then I would say try out some smaller transactions to get some experience. Maybe sell that random series coin that turned out to be a flop. But just know that it's probably not a great avenue for selling in bulk. Now, personally, I'm probably never selling any volume over any of those platforms, even knowing that I have the potential to make a little bit more if it goes well. I'd probably just sell a one-off coin that a dealer's not going to give me a fair price for. But I know that there is just more trouble involved and a little bit more risk as well. I mentioned at the beginning that this video has nothing to do with timing. I'm definitely not implying that there's a reason to sell your gold. We do have a lot of new information this year and the environment for gold right now, and really just about any other asset for that matter, is a lot more bearish than it was 12 months ago. Now that is not what's driving this video. We could see a further drop in gold price and we could see it over the next few months, but we could also see a quick reversal. I've heard people suggest that we'll see a bottom for gold hit simultaneous to a bottom in the markets. And they've thrown out a November time frame. And I know that if we see that kind of price movement, there will be people considering cutting a loss and selling. And I could see the situation. We could hit $1,500. Some think we could even see 1400s But I know that I'm looking at any kind of floor like that for gold price as a time to buy rather than as a time to sell. I've also heard realistic cases for 25% year-over-year climbs for gold from those same people who mentioned the 1400s. So they're also talking about $3,000 gold. They're talking about it hinging off of that Fed pivot that would probably follow any kind of crash. But for me, either direction, those cases are far too speculative to see the point in selling gold down and then turning around and buying back in. The premiums are just too high. So just to be really clear here, anything that I'm saying about price movement is simple speculation. And it's speculation that isn't pushing me to make any sudden moves. It's actually the opposite. I think we're in kind of a holding period at the moment, so I'm not going crazy with any buying. But regardless of all of this, like I said earlier in the video, I think everyone should at least know what to expect 
if they did want to sell. And it's always better to know ahead of time than it is to try to figure it out on your heels. It reminds me of a kickboxing coach I had for a clinic once. No fight backing up. Punch don't come from your heels, he would say. And if I was any good at accents whatsoever, that might make more sense. But the idea here is clear. There's a right way to do things, and then there's the other way. You don't want to have to try to figure something out while you're getting beat up. And I think that that's a really good place to stop. So if you have tips on selling, let us know in the comments. And if you want to take a stab at predicting the market bottom or the floor for gold price, well, that's always fun too. So let us know what you think. And then while you're at it, be sure to hit the like button if you found any of this interesting. That's a big help to the channel. And be sure to subscribe if you want to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care. Thank you.